Hey, what's up everyone? Today is Saturday, January 23rd, and as promised, I have a very awesome ration to do today. This is a Spanish Armed Forces individual combat ration, and this is the lunch menu A4. So it has an expiration date of, well, it's more like a Best Buy of uh, November 2020. So it's only two months past, and it's perfectly gonna be fine. So it's really windy today, it's 28 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, I'm gonna be using the Esbis stove that comes in here uh, with the ration to heat up the course, the main course. And uh, yeah, really excited to check it out. A bit about the Spanish MRE. So they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner rations uh, that all have the same packaging basically. Uh, of course the menu is different. The breakfast menus are all about the same. They all have a bunch of sweet biscuits, uh, some chocolate, some sometimes hot cocoa, maybe a bit of jam, some cereal, and muesli. Um, they don't have menu numbers, I'm pretty sure, but the lunch menus are the A menus, and they have A1 through A5, and this one's an A4 menu. Uh, so all the lunch menus come with a jam, or they call it fruit cream, and they also come with uh, chicken pasta soup, all five of the menus. And the dinner ones come with uh, meat paste instead of uh, jam, and the dinner ones also come with vegetable soup instead of chicken pasta soup, which is very, very interesting. So let's get this open and uh, see what's inside. Just gonna cut this open. Man, it's really cold. My hands are already freezing. We'll see. And it comes in a nice cardboard box inside, as you can see. Really good packaging. And the Spanish MRE is among one of the world's best MREs, um, next to Italian and French MREs. So, very, very neat. On top, we have a menu and instructions. So as you can see, it's in English and French and Spanish. So we have the chicken pasta soup. We also have, it says baked beans with sausages, which will be interesting to see. Might be chorizo, not really sure. Sardines and vegetable oil and apricot cream or apricot jam. And then all the other MREs will come with the same accessories, uh, which is very, very cool. Looking forward to the isotonic powder with vitamin C, of course. And some information from the Ministry of Defense. So. If there's any bulging on the cans, then do not consume, which makes a lot of sense. So, we have chicken pasta soup. Very nice packaging. It's really smooth and it's this green plastic. So we have these isotonic drinks, and these are anti-fatigue. I think we get four of them. I'm not sure where the fourth one is. Um, go. So a couple years I had them, I consumed them directly out of the packet, like in powdered form, and that works just as well as um, putting it in water. We have three fuel tablets, which we'll be using. And of course, the giant, well, it's a bit dented, but I think it should be fine. This giant can, 300 grams of, I guess it's beans and chorizo. It's a bit dented but it should be fine. Uh, let's see, let's read the back here again. I don't know if they tell you not to consume dented cans. Uh, bulges or if dented. Yeah, just, we'll do a smell and taste test. I mean, well, a visual test first, of course. A smell test, but the taste should be fine. And we have apricot jam. It's actually a hefty portion of it, it's 50 grams. Um, these are notoriously hard to open, so I'll just cut it open. I'm not even gonna bother to try. No one's ever successfully done it. And this is hand disinfectant. Water purification tablets. And then this should be our sardines and vegetable oil. Can of that. Hefty portion, 115 grams. We got our standard matches. These look very similar to the US ones. Uh, we have a dental fluoride cream, which is toothpaste. We have a little mint or gum. I think this is to clean your teeth after you're done with your meal. We have 10 napkins that are 16 centimeters by uh, 16 centimeters. And lastly, we have our foldable Ezra stove in this beautiful empty box. So let's get ahead and start with the Esbit stove because we'll be heating up our main course first. Um, so how this works is uh, these two sides have the extra folding uh, have the extra folding tabs on the corner, so these will be up, and then these two will be folded downwards. 
So I've actually never folded an Esbit stove before, but um, from what I've seen, it's quite easy. And it's a very light, like aluminum metal. You guys can hear that. Okay, so the packaging is starting to blow away a bit, so I'm just gonna put that down on a seat or something. Again, you guys can definitely hear the wind. It's it's quite mediocre, not strong, but it's gonna it's gonna blow some stuff away. So this Esbit stove is very easy to fold. Um, just be careful not to cut your hands on the corners. These are very good quality, so you won't really cut your hands, cut your fingers, but here's a side view, side profile. Of course, it's not gonna be 100% perfect, but it sits nicely and you can put your main course on top of there with no problem. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna have to get started on the heating process. So I have a little platform here and I also have a wind blocker for the main course. Actually, I have to zoom out on my camera a bit here. So we're just gonna put that back there. And then this is gonna block the wind, as you can see. So first off, we're gonna have to open the can of chorizo and beans. Oh, they don't come with, uh, these MREs don't come with spoons, by the way. So I had to, I had to bring my own. That is one thing to note. And you can see it's like, uh, it looks like kidney beans or pinto beans. And you can see a giant piece of chorizo up there. The fat started to separate a bit. That should be fine. It certainly passes the smell test. It smells like oil. Um, yeah. All right, now we take, well, we could take one, but let's do two. Let's do two of these. Um, probably break it with my fingers, so I'll just cut it open. We're gonna do two fuel tablets. Oh yeah, they smell. Smell pretty, pretty strong. Um, there we go. Smell got a bit on my fingers. Oh, I don't want it on the table, but um, as you guys can see right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that there, and then we're gonna have to light a match. Which is right here, we break the staple. This video will be a bit longer, but hopefully you guys, you guys all stay tuned. These matches are quite flimsy, but let's see, yeah. The match just literally just broke, like it's, there we go. I don't know if you guys can see there. It's barely burning, but it's burning a bit. Yeah, see that. You can see the fire and you can hear the wind. It's really blowing heavily against the trees. Let's actually do another match so it heats up faster or it, um, it burns faster. There we go. Just like that. Oh, let's move this back a bit more so the wind doesn't get it. It's really hard to do this on a windy day again. So, what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna mix that up a bit. Oh yeah, Look at that tasty food. There's a bit of fat separation at the top, which I don't think I should be worried. It's like a bit dotty, but if you guys saw my clam chowder video, then this would be no problem. So we're just gonna put that there. You guys can see immediately, it's starting to smoke up a bit. So I just had it. it tastes kind of like kidney beans, I think. Um, so yeah, it tastes pretty good. So since it's really cold, oh, it's starting to burn in my face actually. Let's move this this way so it doesn't, the smoke doesn't get in my face and the wind doesn't get it either. So we're gonna start off with the chicken and pasta soup. It's a 20 gram pack, I think, or 15 or 13 actually. Looks pretty standard. Then you have little pasta shells. The wind is absolutely destroying the smoke. I'm just inhaling that. Um, chicken pasta soup smells very salty. It's not often that I could say things smell salty, but we're gonna give this a try. 
and I have some hot water. I'm not gonna add too much to it so it stays somewhat concentrated. And we have ourselves a small bowl of the soup. Guys, look at that. It's a thick chicken stock colored broth with pasta shells. And these pasta shells are gonna take a while to soften up, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try some of the soup right now. Let's give it a smell. It smells like very strong instant chicken soup. Not very, very, very fresh, but should be very good. It's very chickeny, and you can see bits of powder are still stuck in the shells. So these shells are gonna be quite salty when you when you take a bite into them, and they're gonna be a bit crunchy as well. You guys will hear. Mmm, tastes like uncooked pasta. Now, generally, you'd probably boil these in a bowl over a fire, so the pasta shells cook more thoroughly, and the soup is a bit hotter because right now it's a bit warm to hot, but not very hot. So, on a cold day. I mean, a salty soup, a salty broth is gonna save you. And I'm not gonna complain. This is maybe like a seven and a half out of 10 chicken soup, if I'll be honest. You guys can hear that pasta crunch. Let's get some hand sanitizer on. So no moist towelette, but you do get a small packet of hand sanitizer, as you guys can see. Now I hate when hand sanitizer is like slimy because it takes forever to get off your hands and in that case this hand sanitizer is quite slimy and I got a couple cuts on my knuckles and they're burning while the wind is blowing and this alcohol is making my hands frozen cold so I'm feeling the freezing sensation as well as the burning sensation but although it is a bit slimy at first it does dry out very very fast that is if you're outside in the wind in 28 degree weather um, it smells really, really nice, actually. It doesn't smell alcoholic. It smells like a very, very pleasant soap. Like, one at a public bathroom, but like the best soap that you would ever find in a public bathroom. That's the smell of what it smells like. Um, hopefully our Esma stove is still doing fine. I hope so. We're not gonna try out this toothpaste because um, the breakfast ration comes with a toothbrush. And so throughout the day, you're supposed to keep that toothbrush for your three meals. And they give you toothpaste for lunch and dinner but of course I don't have the toothbrush on me and I'm not gonna brush my teeth right now. So we're gonna put that to the side. So here's the apricot jam. They don't give you any biscuits or anything to spread it on, so you're just gonna have to eat it on its own, which is perfectly fine by me because these jams are delicious. But then again, these packaging, these packages, or this packaging is notoriously hard to open. Like my hands are cold, so I don't have full strength, but this thing is literally stuck. So what people do is they just cut slits on the side and then they peel it back as you guys will see here. And although this makes your knife a bit sticky, you get access to 50 grams of this delicious jam, or fruit cream as they call it. I just looked off my fingers, it's very, very sweet. So contrasting to the chicken soup, we have apricot fruit cream, which glistens in the sun. And this isn't like your typical, like very spreadable jam. It's more of like a hardened jelly in between a jelly bar and your standard jam is this texture. And it's this very, very dark amber that shines and glistens under the sun very well. It's very sweet. And I mean, this tastes like local Spanish produce, you know, it's, it's so fresh, it really is. It's very sweet, very energizing, and very fresh. It's super, super sweet. But given that this is the one of, only, like, one of the only sweet items in the entire ration, I wouldn't really complain. Let's say another bite of that. And I can't really describe how apricots taste, but it tastes just like how apricots taste. So, it's a big morale boost to get a different jam in every lunch ration menu. They also have pear, they also have apple, they also have quince. I think that's how you pronounce it, which is like a local Spanish fruit. Got some on my fingers. 
but you lick all that goodness off, especially off the spoon, and you feel very satisfied. It's incredible that they give you 50 grams of jam. No other ration does that. The US ones are much lower in quality, and they don't give you as much. I think they only give you like 28 grams. Um, so yeah, let's see how our main course is doing. Did our flame go out or is it still heating? Seems like our flame went out. So this is not like how I planned it to be because I expected it to last a bit longer. So I'm just gonna have to manually heat that, light it on fire with a lighter. And then we will put this back on. Sorry about that. For another maybe like five, six minutes. Uh, hopefully it'll be ready soon. In the meantime, let's move on to the other can in our ration, and this is gonna be sardines in vegetable oil. And these cans don't destroy your nails. You can actually, you can actually peel them pretty easily and open them. Actually, it's pretty, it's resisting a lot of it, but got that open. So you got some nice, nice olive oil, or not olive oil, vegetable oil. So it's just, it's very, very clear. It's very pure, as you guys can see. Oh, it's such a light oil as well. It's not salty at all, and the oil's very, very light. Fish oil is really good for you. And um, not many, not many countries can say that they provide their soldiers with fish oil on a regular basis. Because in the Spanish army, apart from your soup and your main, the other like big food item that you're gonna have is canned seafood. And whether that might be mackerel, sardines, octopus, or even squid in its own ink, you're gonna get a healthy dose of oil and protein. And these sardines are really good. They taste a lot better than the standard canned sardine. They have a very, they have more of an irony flavor than your standard sardine. And also you guys can see how color it is. It's like a darker, it looks like a darker meat. And it's very, very light still. It's not dry at all. High in protein, not too high in sodium. They're daily nutrients. It's a very delicious dish. As you guys all may know, Spain is very, very famous for their mackerel, but their seafood and fish in general is just of the highest quality. It's the superlative fish, I mean. Sardines are really good, but I would have liked to try the mackerel, if I'll be honest. So, next we have the isotomic isotonic vitamin C drink, which is a anti-fatigue drink or a defatigant, I think is what they call it. it. Spills everywhere, but it's nice. And we're gonna do two packs of these because in drink form, they are less concentrated than you would think they are, or they would be. So I'm not using my bottle today. I'm just gonna use my bottle to pour some water in there. And you guys can definitely hear the wind now. And it's blowing the smoke all into my face. You guys see that? That food is looking delicious, if anything. All right, here we go. Vitamin C isotonic drink. It smells like lemon. It's like one of those lemony hydration powder mixes. That's what it smells like. There are bits at the bottom that haven't yet dissolved, but stir it up and give it a try. So it just smells like a lemon vitamin C drink. It smells like if you guys have ever had emergency, it's a good drink. Not too sweet. It's actually more salty than sweet because I guess uh, the salt is for your hydration actually. So it's like a saltier lemony drink. Not for everyone, and not everyone can take this dry, but, you know, then again, not everyone likes salty lemon. 
So as you can see, the main course is almost done. I'll probably leave it on for another like 30 seconds. The fire is gonna get out of control soon. So we're gonna have to put that out. And yeah, the wind is also going out of control. All right, let's take the can off. Let's take that off. That fire will burn out on its own. I'll just let it blow this way. There we go. Wow, look at this. Got beans, got a bit of chorizo, and this very dense oil. That looks really, really good. It's like a red oil. It smells very, very porky. Mmm, yum. Let's mix it up a bit more. Let's actually put it in a bowl so the heat distributes more evenly. And then let's eat this quick before it gets any colder. So we just heated this up. And the bottom is actually very nicely heated. Nothing burnt. You know, the last thing you want to do is burn your delicious main course. And especially if you're in a cold situation, this thing's going to be the pinnacle of your day. So not too much meat from what I see. The top layer is just some pork. Here's some pork skin or fat, which you'll probably get some nice collagen in. Let's, give, let's just give the beans a try first. Mm. The outside of the beans has the same texture as the inside. And although the outside might not feel too heated, the inside is very, very warm. It's actually quite hot. It's very good. And you also get this giant chunk of delicious Spanish chorizo, which you're not gonna find in any other ration. And in these like hot chorizo oils, you see, look at that. Let's give another big bite of these beans. Good protein in this as well. Mm. It's not overly salty like any of the US MREs are. And it just tastes hearty. It's fresh beans. You can't replicate this texture with freeze-dried meals. You just can't. It's so good. You guys see this chunk of chorizo right here? You don't get much of it, but it cuts very easily. I see the fat on there. Oh yeah. Let's give it a bite. Hmm. The saltiness of the sausage has definitely dissipated into the rest of the meal, but the flavor is quite intense and it melts right in your mouth. This tastes like authentic Spanish chorizo from my knowledge, which I have had authentic Spanish chorizo. It's really, really good. Mm. Well, there goes the chorizo. Why not try some of that pork fat with beans? Oh yeah. Oh man, the fat is just creamy, melts in your mouth. And the flavor combination is just so delicious. You don't want this meal to end, but guess what? It's not ending soon because you get 300 grams of these delicious beans and pork fat. Sorry this review is a bit messy, but with a lot of wind and stuff blowing everywhere, I definitely have to change my setup for anything to change. Oh yeah, let's go for one more bite. I see those oils. It's even got a bit of an umami flavor when you get to the fattier bits. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. So overall, how would I rate this meal? Well, let's look at it by each component. So the Espa stove is actually kind of still burning, but I'll take care of that after the video. The Spanish MRE provides you with a very healthy daily dose of vitamin C, which is pretty essential in combat situations. And especially if you're fighting for hours on end, the anti-fatigue aspect of this is very, very essential. And the taste of this is actually really good. I really enjoy this. 
even though it's a bit salty. I'd give this a nine and a half out of 10. With the jam, I mean, it's a morale boost. You can't go wrong with jam. Unless you genuinely, genuinely don't like jam, then you're not gonna have a problem with this. That right there is also nine and a half out of 10. The sardines, well, a lot of rations lack protein. This is the perfect solution. So I give this a nine out of 10. If it was mackerel, maybe a 10 out of 10. I really do like mackerel. Chicken soup, again, seven and a half out of 10. But if you cook it right, it could be an eight. And this main course is a nine and a half out of 10. I really love Spanish food and they execute this perfectly, even in a Spanish ration. That's two months past its best by date. It genuinely is really palatable. So would I rate this meal? Well, it's definitely better than a nine out of 10 that I've given in the past. Mm, let's give it a 9.2. And that could vary by menu as well, of course. So the last thing we tried is the chicle gum. And I think that might be for endurance. I'm not really sure that's what that means. So let's take a sip of the rest of this vitamin C drink. And let's try the gum and then we'll call it a day. Oh yeah. That's a good palate cleanser as well, by the way, the vitamin C drink. One solid piece of gum. Bigger than the standard chickle, but smaller than two big ones, or smaller than two medium-sized ones. All right, let's give it a go. Mm. It's not spearmint, it's actually peppermint. And this peppermint hits, all of a sudden, hits really hard. And you do wake up. I have to say, this gum is good for your teeth, and it's good for your energy. Props to them for making that. It's a fantastic way to end off a meal, of course. I haven't finished. I'm going to finish this after I turn off the camera. And the Esbit stove is done burning. And what's left is an imprint of the two original fuel tablets and two dried up or burnt up matches. So, yeah. These aren't meant to be reused. These are a one-time usage because they come in every single Spanish MRE. But I suppose you could use these a couple times around. Save some metal. And it does burn, you guys can see. But it's not too hot already. I mean, it's gotten pretty cold. So yeah. Just be very careful, you guys do have to burn it on a surface. Uh, don't put it on like, you know, like a marble table or wooden table. Because it will leave a mark. So yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll come back to you guys next week with a very awesome Chinese ration. Uh, stay safe and peace out.